Mr Higgins. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise today in recognition that better health for all Australians is key in our development and success as a country. And I'd like to thank all the members of the House of Representatives Standing Committee on Health, Aged Care and Sport for their report um, entitled The New Frontier, Delivering Better Health for All Australians. I extend a special thanks to the member for North Sydney for his work in chairing this inquiry and to the Deputy Chair, Mr Deputy Speaker, the thank member you. for MacArthur, who, as a paediatrician, along with me, is a former brother-in-arms on the front line of health care. Thank you. Alongside the Secretariat supporting uh, the committee, the member for North Sydney and the member for MacArthur have overseen the development of 31 recommendations to ensure the best opportunity for health for everyone in Australia. And I'm very delighted that I was asked to be a supplementary member of the committee um, and indeed has been a very um, bipartisan committee and a great experience. Uh, truly something to be recognised in this parliament of actually progressing outcomes for all Australians. So thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, for your participation um, and thank you for allowing me to participate as well. Thank Mr you. Deputy Speaker, we know that indeed most Australians know that Australia enjoys one of the best health systems uh, of any country. And Medicare sits at the foundation of our health system and combined with private health insurance and primary health networks form a strong foundational framework of health care that delivers for the benefits of all Australians as part of a universal health care system. Indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker, all levels of government are involved in the running of our system and it is clear that it is a successful system. In fact, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, as an outcome, Australia ranks eighth in the world for life expectancy. Um, by and large, metrics of health rank Australia in the top 10 worldwide. And in fact, some metrics have us at number two. But of course, there is always more that we can do. And we can never be satisfied. We must always strive for better. It's the least we can do for all Australians. So that is why I'm very delighted, Mr Deputy Speaker, with the New Frontier report, which has made numerous recommendations towards ensuring that the, better, the system works better for all Australians. Each of these 31 recommendations were considered and developed in light of current challenges in the health sector, with tangible be benefits from the adoption of these recommendations for all. Some recommendations that I'd like to highlight include the following. The first one is recommendation one, that the committee calls for the establishment of a centre for precision medicine and rare diseases. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, as you know, I was a, a professor at the Murdoch Children's Research Institute, which began life as the um, Birth Defects Institute, the, the Murdoch Birth Defects Institute. It is uh, a preeminent medical research institute that specialises in both genetics and stem cell research. And so it is um, with great pleasure, actually, that this recommendation will help uh, if, if implemented by the Minister, will increase the ability of the Department of Health to provide Australians with access to breakthrough drugs and novel medical technologies, particularly for children with rare diseases. Because as you and I know as paediatricians, there's often very little hope for these children. And um, we're currently in the House debating Maeve's Law, a very important um, law reform that uh, may offer new hope to people um, who have this very rare genetic condition uh, through the mitochondria. Uh, so it's great to see that there would be potentially a centre that would focus on new technologies of precision medicine and for rare diseases. Uh, on top of this, the proposed centre would provide a comprehensive horizon scanning unit for the aforementioned drugs and technology supporting patients. Uh, and this centre will be well served to advise the Department of Health as well as Medical Research Advisory Board. A recommendation three is another recommendation I'm particularly proud of, and that is that the committee recommends the creation of an Office of Clinical Evaluation within the Department of Health. Uh, this office would evaluate both pharmacological and non-pharmacological interventions, as well as establishing a living evidence function that ensures health assessment is informed by the most up-to-date and accurate data. Uh, we all know, having been through COVID, how important knowing what the most recent tests and diagnostic therapeutics, but as well, sorry, diagnostic as well as therapeutics is uh, for the care of patients. And so the opportunity for research to be in a living evidence function uh, would be useful to Australia. Having an external horizon scanning so that we can connect um, with um, countries overseas. I will say as an aside, Mr Deputy Speaker, that you and I know that medic medical types in Australia do keep up internationally through international medical conferences. Mm -hmm. um, and Australians are great travellers, but health professionals in Australia, particularly doctors and medical researchers, are fantastic travellers. Um, and that has actually served us well as a sort of subterranean 
global health diplomacy in this country. And you and I know, as both being members of the National Health um, COVID Response Committee, uh, that there is a lot of uh, gathering of data across jurisdictions by the health professionals in this yep. country that feed into this NHMRC-supported uh, committee and provide evidence uh, for um, the government and for policy within this country. But it would be great to have an office of clinical evaluation that does this on a constant basis, yep. not just in the uh, period that we face when we look at a um, health pandemic such as we are having. So by gathering this information and then sharing with state and territory governments, the proposed office would ensure the continuity of best quality and most effective treatment. Mr Deputy Speaker, in my role as co-chair of the newly formed Parliamentary Friends of MedTech, I'm particularly pleased by a number of recommendations that pertain to the emergence of new medical technology that will help ensure Australian patients get fast and efficient access to the best available devices and digital products as and when they emerge. And many people watching this will absolutely understand that one med tech that has been of great benefit to all Australians is telehealth, a form of digital interaction with um, clinicians, which means you don't need to travel through congested inner cities or you don't have to travel, travel uh, long distances in rural and remote parts of Australia. You can get uh, access to scripts or to review appointments um, at the drop of a phone call or video conference. So we know these new technologies, which Australia has been on the forefront of developing, um, are really uh, something that we want to make sure that we can bring to market more quickly um, and bring through the regulatory process more efficiently. Uh, to this effect, the committee recommendation 19 suggests reforms, um, particularly to one part of the medtech um, sector, and that is the prosthesis list, by firstly addressing the lack of coverage for non-implantable devices under the current arrangements, and secondly ensuring that there is improved coordination between the Medical Services Advisory Committee and the prosthesis list advisory committee to provide faster access for patients. Further, the new Frontier report recommended that the Independent Health Technology Assessment Review reassess relevant aspects of the health technology assessment process to ensure there are future pathways for treatments and therapies that do not fit neatly into the current system, such as for rare cancers, antimicrobials, orphan drugs and precision medicines. Mr Deputy Speaker, as a paediatrician, I would emphasise that it's imperative that appropriate clear pathways are considered for inclusion for paediatric medicines and technologies. The committee was of the clear view that precision medicine approval pathways will require a different application assessment than current approaches designed for treatments for common conditions with large data sets and comparative evaluation, evaluations. Finally, with regards to MedTech, the committee recommended the Department of Health introduce an equivalent to the managed access programs for medical devices. The report recommended the details of this scheme, including eligibility criteria and duration, should be formulated in consultation with patient groups, clinicians and industries. Recommendation 21, Mr Deputy Speaker, I know is one of particular interest to you and of course to me, where the committee calls for the standardisation of newborn screening across Australia. Yeah. And about time too, I would say. <laughs> On top of this, an expansion of the newborn screening program in light of the increased understanding of genomic testing. And we know that uh, genomic research, again, from the Murdoch Children's Research Institute, but also the Garvin Institute, is preeminent here in Australia. And we should take advantage of that, not just for our patients and for Australians, but also for the, um, clinic, for the uh, business opportunities that this provides to Australian businesses. Preventative health care is immensely important to me, considering my background in paediatrics, and accurately, accurately screening our youngest Australians is crucial to make sure that we can detect those early conditions as early as possible to give them the best possible chance for a good start to life. Mr Deputy Speaker, the committee's recommendation for increased patient acts, uh, voice is something I see as paramount for moving forward. The committee implores the Department of Health to bring patient voice up front into the health technology assessment system. This includes representation of peak patient bodies in the system, refreshing every three to five years. And particularly importantly, we did as a committee recognise um, that there was a dearth of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples um, as voices um, with, with regards to particularly medicines that may have um, particular specialty in their particular situation. So I'm very pleased that we have identified this as a gap in, the, um, uh, in our healthcare system. We know that they experience everything um, and we need to make sure that patient voice is pivotal to uh, improving our healthcare services in general. 
So, Mr Deputy Speaker, Australia's health system is oft lauded as one of the best in the world, but complacency and satisfaction will not improve the lives of Australians in the health system. We must continue to del deliver better health for all Australians. This, indeed, is a time for the new frontier, and COVID has, has uh, focused that more now than ever. Uh, by looking at these, this part of the health technology assess, uh, delivery of Australia, this will help give every Australian the opportunity for better health. I commend this report to the House. Thank you. Yeah, I thank the member for Higgins. I thank her for her kind words and for her efforts on the committee.